The Sino-Tibetan languages, in a few sources also known as Trans-Himalayan, are a family of more than 400 languages spoken in East Asia, Southeast Asia and South Asia. The family is second only to Indo-European in terms of the number of native speakers. The Sino-Tibetan languages with the most native speakers are the varieties of Chinese 1.3 billion, Burmese 33 million, and the Tibetic languages 6 million, but many Sino-Tibetan languages are spoken by small communities in remote mountain areas and as such are poorly documented. Unlike Western linguists, Chinese linguists generally include Kra Dai and Hmong Mean languages within Sino-Tibetan. Several low-level subgroups have been securely reconstructed, but reconstruction of a proto-language for the family as a whole is still at an early stage, so the higher-level structure of Sino-Tibetan remains unclear. Although the family is traditionally presented as divided into Sinitic i.e. Chinese and Tibeto-Burman branches, a common origin of the non-Sinitic languages has never been demonstrated. Several links to other language families have been proposed, but none has broad acceptance. History A genetic relationship between Chinese, Tibetan, Burmese and other languages was first proposed in the early 19th century and is now broadly accepted. The initial focus on languages of civilizations with long literary traditions has been broadened to include less widely spoken languages, some of which have only recently, or never, been written. However, the reconstruction of the family is much less developed than for families such as Indo-European or Austroasiatic. Difficulties have included the great diversity of the languages, the lack of inflection in many of them, and the effects of language contact. In addition, many of the smaller languages are spoken in mountainous areas that are difficult to access, and are often also sensitive border zones. Early work. During the 18th century, several scholars had noticed parallels between Tibetan and Burmese, both languages with extensive literary traditions. Early in the following century, Brian Houghton Hodgson and others noted that many non-literary languages of the highlands of Northeast India and Southeast Asia were also related to these. The name, Tibeto-Burman, was first applied to this group in 1856 by James Richardson Logan, who added Karen in 1858. The third volume of the Linguistic Survey of India, edited by Sten Konau, was devoted to the Tibeto-Burman languages of British India, studies of the Indo-Chinese languages of Southeast Asia from the mid-19th century by Logan and others revealed that they comprised four families, Tibeto-Burman, Thai, Mon Khmer and Malayo-Polynesian. Julius Klaproth had noted in 1823 that Burmese, Tibetan and Chinese all shared common basic vocabulary but that Thai, Mon, and Vietnamese were quite different. Ernst Kuhn envisaged a group with two branches, Chinese Siamese and Tibeto-Burman. August Conradi called this group Indo-Chinese in his influential 1896 classification, though he had doubts about Karen. Conradi's terminology was widely used, but there was uncertainty regarding his exclusion of Vietnamese. Franz Nikolaus Fink in 1909 placed Karen as a third branch of Chinese Siamese. Jean Perzaluski introduced the French term Sino Tibetan as the title of his chapter on the group in Meillet and Cohen's Les Longs du Monde in 1924. He divided them into three groups Tibeto Burman, Chinese, and Thai, and was uncertain about the affinity of Karen and Hmong Mean. The English translation, Sino Tibetan, first appeared in a short note by Perzaluski and Luce in 1931. Topic. Schaefer and Benedict In 1935, the anthropologist Alfred Krober started the Sino-Tibetan Philology Project, funded by the Works Project Administration and based at the University of California, Berkeley. The project was supervised by Robert Schaefer until late 1938, and then by Paul K. Benedict. Under their direction, the staff of 30 non-linguists collated all the available documentation of Sino-Tibetan languages. The result was eight copies of a 15-volume typescript entitled Sino-Tibetan Linguistics. This work was never published, but furnished the data for a series of papers by Schaefer, as well as Schaefer's five-volume Introduction to Sino-Tibetan and Benedict's Sino-Tibetan. A conspectus, Benedict completed the manuscript of his work in 1941, but it was not published until 1972. 
Instead of building the entire family tree, he set out to reconstruct a Proto-Tibeto-Burman language by comparing five major languages, with occasional comparisons with other languages. He reconstructed a two-way distinction on initial consonants based on voicing, with aspiration conditioned by pre-initial consonants that had been retained in Tibetic but lost in many other languages. Thus, Benedict reconstructed the following initials. Although the initial consonants of cognates tend to have the same place and manner of articulation, voicing and aspiration is often unpredictable. This irregularity was attacked by Roy Andrew Miller, though Benedict's supporters attribute it to the effects of prefixes that have been lost and are often unrecoverable. The issue remains unsolved today. It was cited together with the lack of reconstructable shared morphology, and evidence that much shared lexical material has been borrowed from Chinese into Tibeto-Burman, by Christopher Beckwith, one of the few scholars still arguing that Chinese is not related to Tibeto-Burman. Topic. Study of literary languages Old Chinese is by far the oldest recorded Sino-Tibetan language, with inscriptions dating from 1200 BC and a huge body of literature from the first millennium BC, but the Chinese script is not alphabetic. Scholars have sought to reconstruct the phonology of Old Chinese by comparing the obscure descriptions of the sounds of Middle Chinese in medieval dictionaries with phonetic elements in Chinese characters and the rhyming patterns of early poetry. The first complete reconstruction, the Grammata Serica Recensa of Bernard Carlgren, was used by Benedict and Schaeffer. Carlgren's reconstruction was somewhat unwieldy, with many sounds having a highly non uniform distribution. Later scholars have revised it by drawing on a range of other sources. Some proposals were based on cognates in other Sino-Tibetan languages, though workers have also found solely Chinese evidence for them. For example, recent reconstructions of Old Chinese have reduced Carlgren's 15 vowels to a six-vowel system originally suggested by Nicholas Bodman. Similarly, Carlgren's asterisk L has been recast as asterisk R, with a different initial interpreted as asterisk L, matching Tibeto-Burman cognates, but also supported by Chinese transcriptions of foreign names. A growing number of scholars believe that Old Chinese did not use tones, and that the tones of Middle Chinese developed from final consonants. One of these, asterisk s, is believed to be a suffix, with cognates in other Sino-Tibetan languages. Tibetic has extensive written records from the adoption of writing by the Tibetan Empire in the mid-7th century. The earliest records of Burmese such as the 12th century Mayazedi inscription are more limited, but later an extensive literature developed. Both languages are recorded in alphabetic scripts ultimately derived from the Brahmi script of ancient India. Most comparative work has used the conservative written forms of these languages, following the dictionaries of Jashki Tibetan and Judson Burmese, though both contain entries from a wide range of periods. There are also extensive records in Tangut, the language of the Western Shah 1038 Tangut is recorded in a Chinese-inspired logographic script, whose interpretation presents many difficulties, even though multilingual dictionaries have been found. Gong Wang Chern has compared Old Chinese, Tibetic, Burmese, and Tangut in an effort to establish sound correspondences between those languages. He found that Tibetic and Burmese, a, correspond to two Old Chinese vowels, asterisk and asterisk. While this has been considered evidence for a separate Tibeto-Burman subgroup, Hill 2014 finds that Burmese has distinct correspondences for Old Chinese rhymes I, asterisk AJ and I, asterisk J, and hence argues that the development asterisk, greater than asterisk occurred independently in Tibetan and Burmese. <laughs> Fieldwork The descriptions of non-literary languages used by Schaeffer and Benedict were often produced by missionaries and colonial administrators of varying linguistic skill. Most of the smaller Sino-Tibetan languages are spoken in inaccessible mountainous areas, many of which are politically or militarily sensitive and thus closed to investigators. Until the 1980s, the best studied areas were Nepal and northern Thailand. In the 1980s and 1990s, new surveys were published from the Himalayas and southwestern China. Of particular interest was the discovery of a new branch of the family, the Chianjic languages of western Sichuan and adjacent areas. Distribution <inaudible> 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 
Most of the current spread of Sino-Tibetan languages is the result of historical expansions of the three groups with the most speakers, Chinese, Burmese and Tibetic, replacing an unknown number of earlier languages. These groups also have the longest literary traditions of the family. The remaining languages are spoken in mountainous areas, along the southern slopes of the Himalayas, the Southeast Asian Massif and the eastern edge of the Tibetan Plateau. Contemporary languages By far the largest group are the 1.3 billion speakers of varieties of Chinese, most of whom live in the eastern half of China. The first records of Chinese are oracle bone inscriptions from c. 1200 BC, when Old Chinese was spoken around the middle reaches of the Yellow River. Chinese has since expanded throughout China, forming a family whose diversity has been compared with the Romance languages. Diversity is greater in the rugged terrain of southeast China than in the North China Plain. Burmese is the national language of Myanmar, and the first language of some 33 million people. Burmese speakers first entered the northern Irrawaddy Basin from what is now western Yunnan in the early 9th century, when the Pyu city states had been weakened by an invasion by Nanjiao. Other Burmish languages are still spoken in Dahong Prefecture in the far west of Yunnan. By the 11th century their pagan kingdom had expanded over the whole basin. The oldest texts, such as the Mayazedi inscription, date from the early 12th century. The Tibetic languages are spoken by some 6 million people on the Tibetan Plateau and neighboring areas in the Himalayas and western Sichuan. They are descended from Old Tibetan, which was originally spoken in the Yarlung Valley before it was spread by the expansion of the Tibetan Empire in the 7th century. Although the empire collapsed in the 9th century, classical Tibetan remained influential as the liturgical language of Tibetan Buddhism. The remaining languages are spoken in upland areas. Southernmost are the Karen languages, spoken by 4 million people in the hill country along the Myanmar-Thailand border, with the greatest diversity in the Karen Hills, which are believed to be the homeland of the group. The highlands stretching from northeast India to northern Myanmar contain over 100 high-diverse Sino-Tibetan languages. Other Sino-Tibetan languages are found along the southern slopes of the Himalayas, southwest China and northern Thailand. Homeland There have been a range of proposals for the Sino-Tibetan or Heimat, reflecting the uncertainty about the classification of the family and its time depth. James Matisoff places it in the eastern part of the Tibetan Plateau around 4000 BC, with the various groups migrating out down the Yellow, Yangtze, Mekong, Salween, and Brahmaputra rivers. George Van Dream proposes that Sino Tibetan originated in the Sichuan Basin before 7000 BC, with an early migration into northeast India, and a later migration migration north of the predecessors of Chinese and Tibetic. Roger Blench and Mark Post 2014 have proposed that the Sino-Tibetan homeland is northeast India, the area of greatest diversity, around 7000 BC. Roger Blench 2009 argues that agriculture cannot be reconstructed for Proto-Sino-Tibetan, and that the earliest speakers of Sino-Tibetan were not farmers but highly diverse foragers. Classification Several low-level branches of the family, particularly Lolo Burmese, have been securely reconstructed, but in the absence of a secure reconstruction of a Sino-Tibetan proto-language, the higher-level structure of the family remains unclear. Thus, a conservative classification of Sino-Tibetan, Tibeto-Burman would posit several dozen small coordinate families and isolates. Attempts at subgrouping are either geographic conveniences or hypotheses for further research. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lee 1937 In a survey in the 1937 Chinese yearbook, Li Fang Kui described the family as consisting of four branches Indo-Chinese Sino-Tibetan Chinese Thai later expanded to Kam Thai Miao Yao Hmong Min Tibeto-Burman Thai and Miao Yao were included because they shared isolating typology, tone systems and some vocabulary with Chinese. At the time, tone was considered so fundamental to language that tonal typology could be used as the basis for classification. 
In the Western scholarly community, these languages are no longer included in Sino-Tibetan, with the similarities attributed to diffusion across the mainland Southeast Asia linguistic area, especially since Benedict 1942. The exclusions of Vietnamese by Kuhn and of Thai and Miao Yao by Benedict were vindicated in 1954 when André Georges Houdricourt demonstrated that the tones of Vietnamese were reflexes of final consonants from Proto Mon Khmer. Many Chinese linguists continue to follow Li's classification. However, this arrangement remains problematic. For example, there is disagreement over whether to include the entire Kra Dai family or just Kam Thai. Zhuangdong excludes the Kra languages, because the Chinese cognates that form the basis of the putative relationship are not found in all branches of the family and have not been reconstructed for the family as a whole. In addition, Kam Thai itself no longer appears to be a valid node within Kra Dai. Benedict 1942. Benedict overtly excluded Vietnamese placing it in Mon Khmer as well as Hmong Mien and Kra Dai, placing them in Austro Thai. He otherwise retained the outlines of Conradi's Indo-Chinese classification, though putting Karen in an intermediate position. Sino-Tibetan Chinese Tibeto Karen Karen Tibeto Burman Topic. Schaefer 1955. Schaefer criticized the division of the family into Tibeto-Burman and Sino-Daic branches, which he attributed to the different groups of languages studied by Konau and other scholars in British India on the one hand and by Henri Maspero and other French linguists on the other. He proposed a detailed classification, with six top-level divisions Sino-Tibetan Sinitic Daic Bodic Burmic Barak Karinic Schaefer was skeptical of the inclusion of Daic, but after meeting Maspero in Paris decided to retain it pending a definitive resolution of the question. Matisoff James Matisoff abandoned Benedict's Tibeto Karen hypothesis. Sino Tibetan Chinese Tibeto Burman. Some more recent Western scholars, such as Bradley and La Poya, have retained Matisoff's two primary branches, though differing in the details of Tibeto Burman. However, Jacques 2006 notes. Comparative work has never been able to put forth evidence for common innovations to all the Tibeto-Burman languages, the Sino-Tibetan languages to the exclusion of Chinese. And that it no longer seems justified to treat Chinese as the first branching of the Sino-Tibetan family. Because the morphological divide between Chinese and Tibeto-Burman has been bridged by recent reconstructions of old Chinese. The internal structure of Sino-Tibetan has been tentatively revised as the following Stambom by Matisoff 2015, XXXII, 1123-1127 in the final print release of the Sino-Tibetan Etymological Dictionary and Thesaurus STEDT. Matisoff 2015, XXXI acknowledges that the position of Chinese as either a sister branch of Tibeto-Burman or a branch within Tibeto-Burman remains an open question. Sino Tibetan Chinese, Tibeto Burman, Northeast Indian Aerial Group, North Assam, Tani, Deng, Kuki Chin, Naga Aerial Group, Central Naga Ao Group, Angami Poshori Group, Zim Group, Tankulik, Maithe, Makir, Karbi, Mru, Sal Bodo Garo Northern Naga, Konyakian Jingfo Asakian Himalayish Tibeto Kanori Western Himalayish Bodic Lepcha Tamangish Dimal Nuar Kuranti Kam Magar Cheping Tangat Chang Tangat Chianjik Argyalranjik Nungach Tujia Lolo Burmese Nashi Lolo Burmese 
Nashi Karenic Bai Topic Starostin 1996 Sergei Starostin proposed that both the Kuranti languages and Chinese are divergent from a core Tibeto Burman of at least Bodish, Lolo Burmese, Tamanjik, Jingpa, Kukish, and Karen other families were not analyzed in a hypothesis called Sino Kuranti. The proposal takes two forms, that Sinitic and Kuranti are themselves a valid node or that the two are not demonstrably close, so that Sino Tibetan has three primary branches Sino Tibetan version 1, Sino Kuranti, Tibeto Burmansino Tibetan, version 2, Chinese Kuranti Tibeto Burman Topic Van Dream 1997 2001 Van Dream like Schaefer rejects a primary split between Chinese and the rest suggesting that Chinese owes its traditional privileged place in Sino-Tibetan to historical typological and cultural rather than linguistic criteria He calls the entire family Tibeto Burman, a name he says has historical primacy, but other linguists who reject a privileged position for Chinese nevertheless continue to call the resulting family Sino Tibetan, including Roger Blench. Like Matisoff, Van Dream acknowledges that the relationships of the Kuki Naga languages Kuki, Mizo, Metii, etc., both amongst each other and to the other languages of the family, remain unclear. However, rather than placing them in a geographic grouping, as Matisoff does, Van Dream leaves them unclassified. He has proposed several hypotheses, including the reclassification of Chinese to a Sino-Bodic subgroup. Tibeto-Burman Western Barak, Brahmaputran, or Sal, Dimal, Bodo Garo, Konyak, Kachin Luik Eastern Northern Sino-Bodic Northwestern Bodic, Bodish, Karantic, West Himalayish, Tamanjik and several isolates Northeastern Sinitic, Southern Southwestern, Lolo Burmese, Karenic Southeastern, Chianjik, Giaranjik A number of other small families and isolates as primary branches Nuar, Nungish, Maguric, etc. Van Dream points to two main pieces of evidence establishing a special relationship between Sinitic and Bodic and thus placing Chinese within the Tibeto Burman family. First, there are a number of parallels between the morphology of Old Chinese and the modern Bodic languages. Second, there is an impressive body of lexical cognates between the Chinese and Bodic languages, represented by the Kurantic language Limba. In response, Matisoff notes that the existence of shared lexical material only serves to establish an absolute relationship between two language families, not their relative relationship to one another. Although some cognate sets presented by Van Dream are confined to Chinese and Bodic, many others are found in Sino-Tibetan languages generally and thus do not serve as evidence for a special relationship between Chinese and Bodic. Topic: <laughs> Van Dream, 2001, 2014. George Van Dream, 2001, has also proposed a fallen leaves model that lists dozens of well-established low-level groups while remaining agnostic about intermediate groupings of these. In the most recent version Van Dream 2014, 42 groups are identified with individual languages highlighted in italics. Van Dream 2007 also suggested that the Sino-Tibetan language family be renamed Trans-Himalayan, which he considers to be more neutral. Topic. Blench and Post 2014 Roger Blench and Mark W. Post have criticized the applicability of conventional Sino-Tibetan classification schemes to minor languages lacking an extensive written history unlike Chinese, Tibetic, and Burmese. They find that the evidence for the subclassification or even street affiliation at all of several minor languages of northeastern India, in particular, is either poor or absent altogether. While relatively little has been known about the languages of this region up to and including the present time, this has not stopped scholars from proposing that these languages either constitute or fall within some other Tibeto-Burman subgroup. However, in absence of any sort of systematic comparison, whether the data are thought reliable or not, such subgroupings 
are essentially vacuous. The use of pseudo-genetic labels such as Himalayish and Kamarupan inevitably give an impression of coherence which is at best misleading. In their view, many such languages would for now be best considered and classified, or internal isolates, within the family. They propose a provisional classification of the remaining languages. Sino-Tibetan Karbi Makir Marush Unnamed group Unnamed group Tani Nagish, Ao, Kuki Chin, Tankul, Zim, Angami Poshori and Maitii Unnamed group Western, Gongdak, Ol, Mahakaranti, Lepcha, Kam Magurik Cheping, Tamanjik, and Lapu Karenik Jingfo Kanyak Bodo Eastern Tujia Bai Northern Chianjik Southern Chianjik Unnamed group Chinese Sinitic Lolo Burmese Naic Bodish Nungish following that, because they propose that the three best known branches may actually be much closer related to each other than they are to minor Sino-Tibetan languages, Blench and Post argue that Sino-Tibetan or Tibeto-Burman are inappropriate names for a family whose earliest divergences led to different languages altogether. They support the proposed name, Trans-Himalayan. <laughs> <laughs> development of dialects and languages <laughs> Change in word structure The phenomenon of drift, proposed by American linguist Edward Sapper, occurred in many languages and dialects in the Sino-Tibetan family. Proto-Chinese and Proto-Tibeto-Burman are both agglutinative languages. The change in Proto-Chinese to Old Chinese around the Shang dynasty could be found in the Book of Songs when the classifications of the noun, verbs, and modifier were all dependent on affixes such as asterisk s, asterisk p, asterisk k. After the Warring State period in China, Old Chinese developed and started to use tones as the classification of words. The suffix asterisk s also presented in the new classification system. The characteristics of Old Chinese were maintained in most dialects of southern China. The Chinese dialects of Min and Wu, which were mainly spoken in southern parts of China, had similarities in pronunciation with reptiles and birds as seen in the Old Taikade language according to Yuruji's research. The prefixes used for differentiating reptiles and birds in Chinese dialects showed similar features with the Old Taikade language. The Old Taikade language was mainly used in the Shangxi and Guizhou areas of China. You believed that these unique prefixes maintained by both the local dialects and the Old Taikade language could be a product of local environmental influence. Dialects in the Tibeto Burman language area developed more conservatively, they keep the rules for pronunciation and word structure the same compared to Proto Tibeto Burman. The Tibetic languages are classified between fusional and analytic language, the Lolo Burmese languages are mostly analytic languages, and the Jingfo languages are a mix of an agglutinative and fusional language. The Bodo Garo and the Kuki Chin Naga languages possibly kept some particular characteristics of the putative Proto Tibeto Burman language, such as agglutination and vowel prefixes. This phenomenon could be that the two language groups were separated early from the Proto Tibeto Burman language, therefore, did not undergo much development. The same happened to Sinitic, where its agglutinative property was kept even when it developed into an analytic language. Old Tibetan and the Chianjik both exhibit consonant clusters caused by the dropping of vowel prefixes, which is believed to be the same structure Proto Sino Tibetan had. Old Burmese and Old Tibetan dropped the vowel prefixes during the dialect acquisition, leaving only Tibeto Burmese, Jingfo, the Bodo Garo, and Kuki Chin Naga languages that kept the vowel form of prefixes. The Lolo Burmese languages and other languages from the Bodish Himalayish language group preferred a suffix structure which they inherited from the Tibetan Chianjik Lolo Burmese group. Their similarities could be proven by example like the phonetics of the Tibetic language for sun, I ma, a chang for sun, ni 31 m 31, the Hakan language for sun, n 55 ma 33, and nashi for sun, i 33 mi 33. 
These inherited suffixes were later retained in these languages and became widespread in dialects of Old Tibetan, which caused the usage of the prefix in the modern language to decrease. According to Dai Qingxia, half of the vocabulary in the Jingfo language are disyllabic as well as most of the nouns of Jingfo. This significant amount of disyllabic words came from the consonant cluster in monosyllabic words and compound words mainly found in the Proto Tibeto Burman language. The development of the Sino Tibetan language had been focused on solving the problem of phoneme rhyme, as well as coordinate the crucial point between monosyllabic morpheme and disyllabic word. Because the Sino Tibetan language consists of a monosyllabic root, a prefix and suffix are needed for classifying word meaning and point of view. Aspect? The prefix asteriska appeared in many Sino Tibetan dialects to coordinate different morpheme structures. The repetition of a syllable has the same coordination effect. Change in tone Chinese and the Hmong Mean and Kra Dai languages are analytic languages that have similar grammar, pronunciation, and syllable structure. They all started with four tones, soon afterward developed into different phonological tones such as Czech tone because of the voiced and voiceless properties of the initial. The aspiration of the initial and the length of the vowel in Czech tone led to further tone development of dialects in these languages. Cantonese in Zhongyang area for Chinese develop eight different tones because of the length of the vowel. The aspiration property also determined the tone development of Kra Dai, of which the tone eventually developed into 16 types of tone. Zongdi dialect of Hmong Min had also experienced the change in tone because of the aspiration property. Typology <inaudible> <inaudible> Word order Except for the Chinese, Bai, Karenic, and Mruic languages, the usual word order in Sino-Tibetan languages is object-verb. Most scholars believe this to be the original order, with Chinese, Karen and Bai having acquired subject-verb-object order due to the influence of neighboring languages in the mainland Southeast Asia linguistic area. However, Chinese and Bai differ from almost all other Vo languages in the world in placing relative clauses before the nouns they modify. Morphology Hodgson had in 1849 noted a dichotomy between pronominalized inflecting languages, stretching across the Himalayas from Himachal Pradesh to eastern Nepal, and non-pronominalized isolating languages. Konau 1909 explained the pronominalized languages as due to a munda substratum, with the idea that Indo-Chinese languages were essentially isolating as well as tonal. Maspero later attributed the putative substratum to Indo-Aryan. It was not until Benedict that the inflectional systems of these languages were recognized as partially native to the family. Scholars disagree over the extent to which the agreement system in the various languages can be reconstructed for the proto language. In morphosyntactic alignment, many Tibeto Burman languages have ergative and or anti ergative an argument that is not an actor case marking. However, the anti ergative case markings cannot be reconstructed at higher levels in the family and are thought to be innovations. <laughs> Classifiers and definite marking There is no language originally in the Sino-Tibetan family that had classifiers, but some subgroups did develop some properties of classifier, such as the Lolo-Burmese languages which had cognate nouns as classifiers. Tibeto-Burman and Sinitic languages also developed classifiers that are used more commonly in Southeast Asia and are mainly used without numerals, such as in Rawang Lega Tiq Bok book one classifier meaning one book, Lega Bok meaning the book. In Cantonese Yat 55 Ga 33 Che 55 one classifier vehicle meaning one car Ga 33 Che 55 meaning the car verbally. Some other classifiers in Tibeto-Burman and Sinitic languages developed the same use as definite or specific marking. Definite marking did not appear in the Proto-Sino-Tibetan language either, but there is some use of it in Chiangic of the Tibeto-Burmese languages, where the markings seem to evolve from demonstratives.
Topic: Vocabulary. Topic: External classification. Beyond the traditionally recognized families of Southeast Asia, a number of possible broader relationships have been suggested. One of these is the Sino-Caucasian hypothesis of Sergei Starostin, which posits that the Yeniseian languages and North Caucasian languages form a clade with Sino-Tibetan. The Sino-Caucasian hypothesis has been expanded by others to Dene Caucasian. To include the Na Dene languages of North America, Barushaski, Basque, and, occasionally, Etruscan. Edward Sapper had commented on a connection between Na Dene and Sino Tibetan. A narrower binary Dene Yeniseian family has recently been well received, though not conclusively demonstrated. In contrast, Laurent Sagert proposes a Sino Austronesian family with Sino Tibetan and Austronesian including Kra Dai as a subbranch as primary branches. Stanley Starosta has extended this proposal with a further branch called Yongzhen, joining Hmong Mean and Austroasiatic. <laughs> Notes <laughs>